Hello everybody, it's Dr. Rick here dropping in on you. Hope everybody's having a great week to this point. Um, I am going to address a topic that I was asked to address. I was asked to uh, give my opinion or add some insight to a discussion. And initially, I'm like, I'm not even going to talk about it. Uh, but then I thought, no, actually, there are a bunch of uh, points of purpose uh, that need to be touched on with this. And so I said, hey, look, I'll go ahead and I will give it a go. So everybody remembers March Madness. And uh, while the men's March Madness thing was uh, weird but exciting, the women's were was off the change because of this ultimate clash between um, LSU and Iowa State. And it was because of their stars. On one side, you had uh, the, the white girl who had been uh, tagged as the college player of the year, and I believe she deserved it. Uh, she balled out of control, uh, no matter what you want to say and whatever. And whatever she threw out, despite white people losing their mind, whatever she threw out in the way of tunning, when it came her way, she acknowledged that it's a part of the game. And she said nobody needed to be coming down on the person who was taunting her. That's, hey, that's the sport. She says, I dished it out. I can take it. So I give her that. So athletes being athletes, I'm good with that. Uh, but let's say uh, Angel Reese, uh, this little sweetie worked her butt off um, and transferred to LSU and did something unbelievable, broke a record for double-doubles in a year uh, in the NCAA, uh, balled and played her butt off to get to the championship game and was a major contributor to winning that championship. Uh, she is getting mad loot uh, through NIL deals, which I think should have been in place a long time ago. Um, and there was something she said that sort of caught the eye or the ear, better yet, of a lot of black people that really jumped on her bandwagon. And that is that she is doing this for all the little black girls that look like her. And she may not have said black girl. She might have said that looked like me, but we knew what it meant. And so she became the poster person for uh, representation of black women. She's 20, 21 years old, but we're going to shoulder her with that. And we're going to make some demands of her that we have not made of ourselves. So uh, she ended up on the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue along with a schoolmate of hers who happens to be a gymnast a little white girl can't think of her name but she was on there and basically they were on there and it was about uh the highest nil earners in college it was angel reese the little white girl i'm sorry i don't remember her name and Bronny james the oldest son of lebron james who is the highest earner bar none um, he hasn't even left high school yet. Uh, he just committed to USC. And uh, so so this is the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue. And so a lot of people are coming out and ripping her because she's supposed to be, quote, unquote, the representation for young black girls. Well, we need, we need to talk about a lot of things. First and foremost, I am not for our women uh, allowing themselves to be sexualized. But I, I need to be honest with myself and look at the entire dynamic. Number one, I'm 55. <laughs> uh, and obviously, as I've gotten older, I've been become a lot more uh, reserved and conservative in how I carry myself, first of all, and how I view women. Uh, I, I, te I tend not to judge women. I tend to want to nurture women. So instead of judging them, I try to treat them in a way that the way I treat them causes them to look at how they move. Um, but there's so much to be said because there's all these different views. It's just a swimsuit issue. It's just a swimsuit. 
Um, and there are a lot of people who see that. It's the swimsuit. Many people have been on that damn thing as in the swimsuit issue. Uh, and it seems the only problem we have with uh, Angel is that she has said she wants to be a model or a, a source of inspiration for little girls that look like her. Well, the truth of the matter is, if you look at that and you're honest with yourself, then you have to say there are a bunch of the little girls that look like her that want to be swimsuit models. They want to be fashion models. Um, they aren't seeing the political side uh, side of this equation. They aren't seeing the sexualization of uh, uh, the black woman. There's nobody been sexualized and objectified more than the black woman. So for those who don't like it because of that, I get it. But what we have to do is the thing that I've always said that we tend to fail to see. You have a young lady who is from Baltimore. So her mom busted her ass to get her and her brother into uh, sports to keep them out of trouble and give them a chance. And uh, they're doing something with it and she's out here and she is definitely has a future and she is actually earning more than almost all of the players in the WNBA, which are professional athletes. Um, and I hope this marks a change for the marketability of female athletes, which is a problem now. And everybody is blaming, for instance, in basketball, the NBA, the NBA doesn't control the market. They are simply capitalizing on it. People spend their money where they spend their money. And uh, athletes get paid off of what they produce. Uh, the WNBA doesn't produce billions of dollars a year, so they can't pay millions and millions of dollars a year to their athletes. But what can happen is athletes can improve their brand starting as early as high school and earn money that they would not have earned just years ago uh, while enriching the schools they go to on scholarship, most of which uh, doesn't actually come with a cost. Most of the stuff, if you actually think about it, the teachers are paid for uh, by a lot of different things. And yeah, in, in, uh, tuition is one of them. But out of a 30,000, uh, let's say a 30,000 student campus, you have a 1,000 student athletes. Them 29,000 paying for that that free ride. Um, so the free ride you're getting isn't cost in the school. So, but they're gonna make you feel like we're giving you a free education. No, you're earning money off of me and not paying me. Well, now NIL deals have sort of leveled the playing field and ki kids are now in transfer portals going to school where they can get better NIL deals. It's giving them more control over their future, and it's also allowing them to leverage what they can learn. It changes everything because now I can get into something that I really want to do while I'm in school, and I can also fund how I want to approach it after I leave school. And these are for the ones who won't make it to the professional level but are good enough uh, and have a, a strong enough level of exposure to get an NIL deal. So uh, that being said, but, but here's the thing. So this young woman has created an enterprise for herself. And yes, unfortunately, we, we live in a society where as a female in this male driven, male controlled society, she's going to get more money for bearing herself. It's 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 sad. I don't like it. But let me tell you, here's where I stand on it. I don't dare tell her she can't do it because I know what the black community that's demanding that she do it will do to her. She'll pass up all of the money. She'll have this virtuous sense of self and the black community will not support her, will not get behind her. The black community doesn't have anything of its own that it owns, that it can pay her what she's giving up to stand on that virtue. The same thing I said about uh, these rappers, we want them to put down the lyrics of misogyny. We want them to put down the lyrics of uh, drug use and the drug culture. We want them to put down um, the lyrics about violence and uh, fratricide and, 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 and femicide. And we want them to, to, to go back to some point uh, where we can hear them talk about 
positive, uplifting things as if for the longest it hasn't been a problem in the music industry, especially in hip hop. Um, it's been usurped a long time ago. Uh, it's not new. We, 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 we've just become, as we've aged, a little more allergic to it. But we have been out of line for a while. But when you look at it and you say, OK, I don't want him talking about Molly's and Percocets. I don't want him talking about banging up some broad. I don't want him talking about this. I, I want respect. I want them to understand the power of their music. I get that. And I agree 100 percent. There's a lot of power in the music. There's a lot of power in a unbelievable platform that Angel has for herself. But we first must remind ourselves that she's 20 to 21 years old and she is following a trend that long precedes her we act like we can go to the 50s and see um dorothy dandridge and uh man so many others just, just slipping my mind right now that were uh, Eartha Kitt and so many more. And then in the 70s, when I was a little boy growing up, losing my mind, looking at Playboy like Jane Kennedy. We act like they weren't in bathing suits. Like they weren't on uh, uh, the covers of magazines. They weren't jet beauties in jet magazine. We act like this is something new. Now, if we want this virtue, if we're saying, okay, we don't want you bearing yourself, then you've got to have something of value to trade out for what she's going to have to give up because this is her money. And she's coming from poverty, just like with those kids in the music industry. They're coming from poverty. And a lot of these kids, because I've been in the industry, a lot of these kids don't start out rapping about crap like that. They start out rapping. Some of them talk about their lives, but a lot of them are talking about getting out of the life because that's their dream. They don't want to live their whole life ducking bullets, their whole lives on on, on, on 20 because they high. They, they, they a lot of, But what happens is if the music industry decides they're marketable, the first thing they do is say, well, what we need you to do is... And then they put a 500000 to a million to a $1.5 million signing bonus in their hand. Money they've never seen in their lives and they will never see if they don't make this move because that's their area of marketable, marketability at a time. Nobody's told them about building something from scratch and growing it out. That's not a possibility to them. That's not how they see it. And you're talking about right now, my mom is struggling to keep the lights on. And you're finna put 500 in my hand and you're telling me I got to say this damn right. I'm going to say it. Number one is we don't have a system in place. I've been talking about this. Like black men lead a rite of passage initiatives where we are socializing young black males into a true identity of self, into the responsibility of black manhood. So that when someone comes and says you need to act like that, they have something inside of them that says that's not how black men act. I can't do that. I need to go back and we need to figure something else out. And the thing is, we have the ability to create it, but we're so busy trying to be accepted. We're so busy trying to fit in. We're so busy trying to get a seat at the table that we are pouring our money into their stuff, enriching them, and then further oppressing ourselves and limiting our opportunities and um, ability to move and do things the way we want to. So would I like to see a situation where our women, my whole thing is wear bathing suits everywhere, everywhere you look. Women in bathing suits. Women are taking pictures of themselves uh, on vacation. Women are taking pictures of themselves on cruises. Women are taking pictures of themselves by the pool at the house. And everything else in bathing suits. Uh, whether you agree with it or not, it's being done. It's a standard that is currently in place. We are not in a place where things are reserved for certain things. It's like, hey, look at me. It's the look at me era. It's the look at me state we're in. It's everybody trying to get noticed. Everybody trying to get liked. It's everybody trying to get that. And I'm not about to tell any woman who I cannot fully uh, support and sustain beyond what she can do for herself, how she sustains herself. 
Now, if my if I'm asked for my opinion on what it looks like and how it could end up, I'm going to give it like I'm doing now. It comes with certain consequences. And I don't think it's an accident that the woman who stood up and said, I'm doing this for little girls who look like me, was offered a swimsuit. Because that takes the bite out of her stance. Not to me, but in the public eye, you're already starting to see people call, recall. Why? Because they, we have this idea of how we want those who we put on pedestals to behave when we aren't behaving or we haven't set the, the, the foundation to support them. We don't support our advocates, our community advocates. We don't support our scholars. We don't support the programs. We don't support our people who are doing unbelievably remarkable things. But we'll celebrate the hell out of every celebrity. We'll go hard in the paint and defend all the bullshit that celebrities do on a regular basis. give more value to their celebrity than we give to the hard work and positioning and character and integrity of the people who are actually fighting for us to have a better uh, a better future not just for ourselves but for our children and their children so when you sit up and you want her to behave a certain way but you have nothing to offer her you're, you're basically saying i want you to sacrifice that meal that they paid you for that spread and wear this I don't have anything to give you to give that up, but I'm expecting it from you because my daughters are watching you. Well, first and foremost, we should be the we should be as parents the one top preeminent uh, pre, uh, preeminent model for our children. I shouldn't be demanding anything of Denzel, anything of Will Smith. Anything of um, LeBron James, anything of Michael Jordan and uh, anybody else uh, to set the standard of manhood, that should be me. And where I'm lacking, I should be working on it. Where I see things need to change, I should be invested in it. And, 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 and the same thing for our women. If we want our daughters to behave a certain way, it comes from them seeing it and then it being valued. Now, men, this is where it gets interesting. When they see their moms carrying a certain level of virtue, they also need to see men valuing the virtue because no matter how much a woman says, she ain't worried about what a man thinks she is. She's naturally built to. So as a man, a man is affirmed by the assessments of the women in his life. We can, we can, we can dodge it. We can talk the hard talk, but at the end of the day, the affirmations of a woman is one of the most powerful catalysts for a man. Tell him he's doing his job. Tell him you appreciate him. Tell him that 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 you are awed at his commitment and his consistency, and see what happens. We're driven by it. We we'll, we look for it. We want respect, but we want to be needed and appreciated, above loved. We want to be loved, but we want those first. Men, women need to feel safe. So when we start creating these safe environments for them, when we start giving them a sense that if it's a black man present, I'm safe versus my greatest threat is a black man. Now, a lot of that is narratives being pushed by the media. The average black man ain't out there beating on his woman. The average black man isn't a physical threat to his woman. The average black man, according to statistics, is the best father statistically better than white men better than latinos better than asians better than arabs this is statistically speaking in in measurable in measurable traits time spent money spent supportiveness affection black man top them all 
but that's not the black man that we have portrayed. So we take the narrative that the media gives us, and that's how we view our men. Our men are out here doing our best. Now, there are some idiots, and those are the ones that are going to get the highlight. Those are the ones that's going to get the headline. Those are the ones that are going to be pushed, the one that won't take care of their kid, the one that beats on that woman, the one that cheats on that woman, the one that's constantly in and out of prison. We get a constant dose of that. They don't make up the predominance of our population as black men, but they are the predominance of the narrative. There's a reason for that, and we have to stop falling for that. So as it pertains to young Angel Reese, there's a standard I would like to see all ladies live at. But I think that we have to create an environment that promotes it. You can't take something that's more celebrated, demand it, and then not have something that replaces it. The Let me tell you something. The idea of virtue as a notion has no value. I'm just a good person, so that should be enough. Virtue doesn't pay the bills. Virtue doesn't set your family up. Virtue doesn't extend to power. Virtue is an internal thing that's a part of your own self-fulfillment. But if you want somebody to exhibit virtue, it has to have value to them uh, outside of how you view them. If how you view them doesn't pay them. We are going to have to get to a point to where we understand how things work. I keep telling you that. We keep moving on our emotions, how it makes us feel. Um, I only saw two pictures because uh, I didn't go looking for it. It's not something I'm chasing down. Somebody sent me the two pictures uh, that were part of the Sports Illustrated shoot that they had. And I didn't see anything over revealing. She had a bikini on. Shit, you go to the beach, you're going to see a bunch of them. And um, the fact, I think it's more, if I'm going to be honest about this, and you know me, that's my thing. I think it's more the fact that she's getting paid a bag to put the bikini on. Um, and people are wondering, would she have the bikini on if it wasn't for the bag? And what does that, what's that, what does that constitute? She got paid to put a bikini on. Uh, she's not the first woman that got paid to put a bikini on. We live in a society that objectifies women. That's the truth. Uh, and, yeah, we objectify our men. Women will object, objectify men, but men have the power, so we don't have to acquiesce to it. We don't have to have the bye-bye bodies and all that to get paid or to be valued or to get through doors and and, and all of the other stuff that women do. That's the reality of it. We live in a patriarchal society where men have the power. So um, we have to be honest about this and look at the fact that, yeah, I, I think there's some objectification going on. I actually think at a certain level that that was thrown at her solely because of that strong, hard stance she took. Does it soften the stance? I don't personally think so but i think that people who did it think it and i think some of uh, my people believe it i think that it, it in some ways to them devalues who she is i think she's a young lady who's number one finding herself she's 21 she's finding herself she is making a strong stand on what she believes and what she feels is right and that's going to change over time as she grows, as she matures, as she gains experience. And we'll see what it looks like five years from now, 10 years from now. But what we should be doing is asking ourselves, why are we hanging the, the, the burden of black representation for black female representation on the shoulders of a 21 year old? I mean, we have some people who have done some great things in their professional careers without bearing it all, at least not that I'm aware of. Angela Bassett turned down roles because of a standard she had. 
And, you know, so I think that we really have to ask what is the real true reason we're not happy with her in that swimsuit issue. I'm not against people having a standard. Not at all. I think it's important that we do. I'm not against teaching virtue and I'm not against, you know, saying, you know, modesty it, it has its place. I'm not against all of that. But what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to judge my little sister because she doesn't fit in some box that somebody wants her to get into and it's nothing in it but their feelings. We can't pay for what we're trying to do in this fight with feelings. And you're asking somebody to sacrifice their financial future so that you can feel better about them. But it's absolutely no value in it. So if you want to have more impact on how the people that we give so much freaking force to anyway, celebrities behave, you have to have the power within the black community to pay them to walk away from what they are getting paid by the, the other side, the system, to do what they do. You know, okay, we are suffering and you, you selling out because you're going to know they're getting money to go eat it. As long as they're not coming and feeding you a bunch of bull crap from the other side to sink you. They just decided they're not going to struggle like you're struggling. And because there's no alternative. Now, if there's an alternative, if we've got black movie theaters all over the place, black movie studios like Tyler Perry and Byron Allen and whatever else is going on, but more entail to where we didn't have to get green light by Hollywood to do anything we wanted to. We didn't have to get green light by Interscope and Universal and all these other places that... Uh, create music and movies and everything else and we could literally sit up and say hey man whatever kind of music you want to make we got you and some of that music is going to be trap music you know why we got traps some of that music is going to be banging music because unfortunately we banging in places but hopefully the bulk of that music is about elevation the bulk of that music is about empowering. The bulk of that music is about exposing the world to a part of the black community that they don't see because the people who green light all of the media doesn't want them to see it. Maybe we should be focusing on that. Maybe should we, be, we should be focusing on um, empowering our communities through programs that are, tied, uh, are, are try, tried, tested, and proven uh, to produce results. Maybe we need to stop begging the other side to fix problems that we have the capacity to fix ourselves. Maybe we are focused on the wrong things and we don't seek to understand anything enough to actually do anything of significance to change it. Maybe it's about us as a whole and we're just pointing and projecting it on Angel Reese. We have work to do. It's that simple. People who don't support anything want to control and dictate everything. It, it's amazing to me. We are responsible for us. And not until we gain an understanding of that and we start to carry ourselves in a way that is uh, representative of that will we really truly experience anything close to liberation and empowerment we're just talking right now because we don't want to take action we want somebody to fix it for us and we'll blame anybody that we can blame because we don't want to be responsible for ourselves on that note look I'm going to get ready to get out of here uh, I just had to drop in and lay that one on you you guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day I am out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They said I should give it up like yeah, that just ain't good enough. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special 
announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.